friends and welcome to my channel. I was really inspired to create a video on how I am going to be welcoming spring this year. Obviously the start of spring is marked differently by different people. For some it falls at the start of March and so it's already being celebrated. For others it falls at the spring equinox which in the northern hemisphere is falling this Monday on the 20th of March. And so I am very happy that the spring equinox is just around the corner. Um, I don't know about anyone else but I've definitely felt as though the last couple of weeks have felt extremely heavy. Um, in the UK in particular, it's been quite cold. We had a, a bout of snow come from out of the blue. Um, so it got really cold and dark again. And it kind of got me thinking like, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> when 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 is the winter months gonna end you know i'm really ready for spring now so yeah i'm super excited for things to get warmer for the sun to be out more and um for all of nature to kind of reawaken so we can enjoy everything that spring has to offer when i was growing up spring was always a really energetic and busy time um, i actually grew up on a small holding so my parents had a lot of animals and um, my dad's an avid gardener so um, it was kind of the time where they were prepping for lambing and also um, planting new seeds. I've always associated spring with rebirth, energy and creativity. And though I no longer live on a small holding, there's still plenty of things to enjoy out in nature and so I thought I would make a video on how I am welcoming and celebrating spring this year. So the first way that I will be welcoming spring this year is getting out in nature. I think getting outside is a really amazing way to embrace the start of spring. Obviously this is a time when new plants and flowers are appearing, there's a lot of daffodils and snowdrops about which are so beautiful and also all the animals are coming out of hibernation at this point and I feel like in many ways um, as humans it feels like we're in a bit of a hibernation over the winter months because the days are so short, it's so dark outside, it's harder to get out because the weather conditions aren't great and so I feel like this is a way that we can kind of um, celebrate alongside nature. I'm really lucky that our house is right on a forest and so I like getting out early um, when it's still a little bit quieter outside but the sun's out and it's just so beautiful and there's so much out in the forest at the moment. I've actually seen two deers in the past week um, and also I found an abundance of nettles everywhere which brings me on to the next way I am celebrating spring. So the next way that I am welcoming spring this year is getting creative. Um, like I was saying before, I feel like spring really incites creativity in us all. There's so much inspiration to be taken from what's going on around us. And so whether or not you paint or draw or embroider or I don't know, anything, whatever you do to get creative, I think this is a great time of year to reignite that love, that passion um, for making things and creating things. And so I personally love to bake and cook when I get the time, not for other people, just, just for myself and, <laughs> and Nick. I really hate cooking for other people. It makes me so anxious, but um, I do love cooking for things that we're gonna eat at home. And so um, um, as I was saying before, I actually love bringing things in from the forest. And so um, I found an abundance of fresh stinging nettles and so I brought them in to make some nettle bread which is definitely a new one for me. I've actually never used nettles in cooking before but I was reading about nettles and they're actually a really good source of vitamin C and protein and so I was like why not? Why, why are we all not using nettles? Let's bring some nettles in. So yes. I actually adapted a recipe that I found on YouTube, so I will link the video below. Obviously, before you go out picking anything out from the forest or fields or what have you, uh, make sure that you know what you're looking for. Um, don't just pick up anything and eat everything because there are a lot of things that you can't eat. When I was collecting the nettles as well, I, I wore gloves personally. In the video that I watched, the lady didn't wear gloves. She just like, went right in. She's definitely braver than me. I know different people have different amounts of reactions from nettles, so... Just bear all of that in mind um, before you go foraging for certain foods. But anyway, I created this nettle bread and this is my first attempt and also it was gluten free because I can't eat gluten. And in the past I have tried creating bread before and it's always a little bit tricky. Making gluten free bread is not an easy process, it either comes out too stodgy or too crumbly. But um, this nettle bread actually turned out quite well, I was pretty happy with it. It is still a bit on the stodgy side and the crust is very hard. But when I slice it and pop it into the toaster and put some butter on it, it tastes absolutely amazing. So I really recommend using nettles in your cooking if you get a chance. Now's the best time to go out and pick them um, when nettles are kind of fresh. So um, yeah, I think it's a really lovely thing to do. So the third way that I am welcoming spring is definitely an age old tradition and that is spring cleaning. 
I feel like doing a full house clean for spring is such a great form of self-care. Just making my space feel clean and fresh always makes me feel so much better. I always think it's really good for people's mental health just to have a clean space. I know when my house gets messy and untidy, which trust me happens a lot, um, I always find myself just kind of feeling really bogged down and just not having much clarity at all. So um, I think they say, you know, clean, clean space, clean mind or something along those lines. Putting on fresh bed sheets, decluttering anything that no longer serves you. We all end up with those things in our wardrobes and cupboards that we no longer need and yet we hold on to, but if it's something that could maybe bring someone else joy, it's really good to let go of it, you know, take it to a charity shop. And so, yeah, I think it's good to just kind of get rid of all the unwanted items and really set the tone for the rest of the year. Um, I also love bringing in seasonal flowers in spring. I think it's just amazing. It just brings a pop of color into your house and it's always lovely to just have a bit of nature inside, um, particularly because the flowers at the moment are so beautiful, you know, daffodils and tulips, so bright and colorful. Um, so yeah, I picked some out. Obviously, um, there's a lot of flowers available outside. You know, if you have a space that's off the beaten track where you can find daffodils, it's lovely if you can cut your own. However, obviously just be mindful that you're not taking them from a community area. Um, there was some daffodils that I did come across, but they were definitely in a community patch. So I didn't go and chop those. I actually just ended up um, grabbing some from the supermarket, um, which obviously they're quite easy to get hold of there. Um, but if you can find them out in the wild, then I feel like that's extra special. So yeah, bringing in some seasonal flowers, which really brighten up the place, I think adds that extra element of spring to your house. And I feel like daffodils always make me feel so happy because they're so bright and colourful. So the next way that I am welcoming spring is actually something new that I'm trying this year. And that is going out and getting something that is new to me and giving it fresh life. So, so we actually have a really great antique shop in our town. Um, it's multiple floors, it's massive, it's really amazing. So we went down there for a little while and we were having a look around. There's loads of books as well. Not that I found anything that I wanted to take home. I have in the past found some great books on plants um, in this particular antique shop, but nothing this time. And I wanted a candle holder. I think they've got a particular name, but I can't remember, but it's like the, the kind of like old fashioned ones where they've got a little handle. Um, and so I went into the antique shop to see if they had any and they did. Um, so I got that and the one that I found was actually silver, but it's been quite tarnished, I think, because it's been sat in there for quite a while. And so um, I purchased it. This is something that's new to me, but obviously a second hand. Um, but I thought it was a great opportunity to bring something back to life. So I actually already had some bicarbonate soda in and um, I actually ordered some kosher salt offline because I heard this is a great way to get rid of marks on silver and to kind of bring the shine back out without using things like um, silvo. Because um, I think these things really smell really strong. Well, I don't know for sure, but I know that Brasso smells really strong and I'm, I'm really, I really hate things that are really strong smelling. It really bothers me. So yeah, I'm trying a different way and I'll see if it works. You know, I'll, obviously I'll put a clip on if it does of me <laughs> trying this out. So it all seemed a little strange initially when I was reading the instructions, but I was trusting the process and I'm actually really happy with how it's come out. Obviously, there's probably a little bit more work that I could do because um, there's still a few marks on there that you can probably see, but I actually think it's made a massive difference. So I'm really chuffed with it and I'll, I'll probably give it another go again and see if I can get some more of the marks out. But yeah, you know, I feel like going out there and finding something that's new to you, something secondhand in a charity shop, an antique shop, um, something that maybe needs a little bit of TLC and that you can bring back to life and add to your house for spring. Okay, so the final way that I am welcoming spring this year is not something that's new, um, but it's picking up a good book and a book that's kind of magical, whimsical, which really celebrates all of the amazing things about spring. And so I picked Heather Forkett's book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I'm really enjoying this. Um, it's not actually set in spring, it's actually set in like the winter months, but the whole premise of the book is about, you know, adventure and exploring and investigating Fae, and I feel like those are all things that are really great for, for spring vibes. And so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm over halfway finished with it, so um, maybe I'll make a video of kind of my thoughts on it. If, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's a really wonderful book, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, and so yeah, picking out a book that you can read, which makes you excited for spring, um, makes you excited about exploring and adventuring, I think is a great choice. I hope you've enjoyed this video. That's everything from me today. 
Um, it would be amazing if you would like to subscribe to my channel, um, especially because I'm a new content creator on this platform. And so it would really help me out if you did. Um, I'm going to be creating more content like this, but also bookish content, Jane Austen themed content, um, kind of similar stuff to what I put on my podcast. Um, and so, yeah, I've got another video that's going to be coming out soon. And it was actually meant to come out before this one, but I got too excited for spring. And so I put it on hold, but that's going to be about um, Jane Austen novels, um, kind of where to start if you're just starting out with Jane Austen. So yeah, look out for that. Make sure you subscribe so you're notified. And yeah, that's everything from me today. I will see you in another video. <laughs> Have you got your ball? Okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.